How's it going? Jacob here with Smedding Performance. We're going to do a two-part video series for you guys showing you all the way through start to finish on how we build a 416 cubic inch LS3. This is the engine block that we're going to be working on today. It's a brand new LS3 straight from GM. The only things that we do to this block is we do a plateau hone job with torque plates and then we do a little bit of stroker clearancing because this is going to run our Smetting 4340 forged 4 inch stroke crankshaft. I generally like to stick with a 4 inch stroke crankshaft whenever you're working with a factory engine block. In an aftermarket block you have a lot more, you have a lot longer of a cylinder sleeve except for the LS7. You have a lot longer cylinder sleeve and so the piston is much more supported with any stroke over 4 inch but in a factory block, four inch is kind of the max I want to go. So we're doing a four inch fully forged crankshaft. It is internally balanced. I have already balanced this as well. If you want to watch how we balance it, click this little video card and you can see our process on another crankshaft. But this crankshaft is done and ready to go. We're going to run a custom hydraulic roller camshaft. It's 241, 253, duration at 50. It's got a 113 lobe separation angle, about 635 intake lift, and about 615 exhaust lift. For the rods and pistons, we're going to run our Smetting 4340 H-beam rod. These rods come standard with ARP 2000 hardware. And these, these bolts are so overkill, it's not even funny. These bolts could easily turn over 8000 RPM with this piston weight and that stroke but we like to overkill things that way you guys can beat the hell out of them and never have an issue. And then we're going to run a nice little Icon Forge piston. These pistons are 4032 alloy compared to the higher strength 2618. And everything is application dependent. This engine is going to be a pump gas about 11 and a quarter to one compression, naturally aspirated, no power adder, and it's going to turn about 72 to 7400 RPM. And so for this engine, it's going to see a lot of street miles, a lot of traffic cruising, some road racing action. And so I do want a forged piston in it for the strength and durability. But I'd rather for this guy do a 4032 piston versus a 2618 because these pistons have less thermal expansion. So when the engine is cold, the piston has less room to grow to come to the correct bore clearance. That's a nice little feature of these little street pistons. And these come in our standard rotating kits and I rate them pretty much for any NA engine. These are gonna be awesome. Anything with a power adder though, then we want the 2618 alloy. It has a lot better detonation resistance. It's a lot more forgiving. This is still a great piston and it's perfect for your normal street strip, naturally aspirated combo. So that about wraps up the short block. So like I said, I've already checked all my bearing clearances. I'm running two thou main clearance. And that might seem tight, but remember, this is an all aluminum engine block, and so it's gonna expand. That main bearing clearance is going to change quite a bit once this engine is at operating temperature. The rod bearings, they're at two thou as well. Again, street motor, not seeing a ton of load and ridiculous RPM, just a nice good street motor. Because it's naturally aspirated, the rings are kind of on the tight side as well. 19 on the top, 19 on the second. Again, no nitrous. We can run them a little bit tighter, tighten up that seal for him. Um, good leak down numbers. And this will be a great little combo. It is going to run our Smetting Performance 260cc 11 degree LS3 cylinder heads. And it will be topped off with a Holly High Ram intake manifold. So it's going to look the part, it's going to sound the part, it's going to have a great broad torque curve and this is going to be a really nice engine. We're going to get to stuffing this thing. I'm going to start with the camshaft. We'll get that installed and torqued and then we'll drop in the crank. I always first install the camshaft completely dry. And then I give it a nice front and back wiggle check to make sure all the, all the cam bearings are perfectly straight. And then I'll come back with the lubricant. The lubricants are so sticky, they kind of mask any of that feeling. So that's why I go dry first and then come back with lubricant. Nice.
The lubricant I use is the Clevite Bearing Guard. And it's a very thick, very sticky, goopy stuff, but it works really nice. Now, before I go any further, I need to set the thrust bearing. And the thrust bearing is what controls the crankshaft's forward and backwards movement in the engine block. And you want the shell of the bearing that's in the main cap and the shell of the bearing that's in the engine block to be perfectly aligned. You don't want them to be offset at all because then you won't have as much thrust clearance as you're supposed to need. So the way to do that is we're gonna drive the crank rearward and then drive the crank forward with a hammer that's gonna set the thrust bearing, then I can check it. Once it's good, we'll final torque the mains. I use an aluminum drift. It's substantially softer than the forged steel crank. This in no way is damaging anything on the crank. This crank is forged steel, okay? Nothing is gonna hurt it from hammering it frontwards and rearwards. This is a normal process that we do in every single crate motor. Don't be scared of the hammer. The factory LS side bolts have a kind of built-in sealant under the head of the bolt. Uh, we don't have those, so I always run just a small bead of RTV around the head right there to protect against any oil leaks. After we torque any fastener inside the engine, we always come back with a blue paint marker. That way everyone in the shop, including ourselves, knows that that fastener is final torqued and ready to go. We always use these Rollmaster billet timing sets in our motors. They have an IWIS German chain, billet sprockets, a lot of adjustability, and best of all, they have a roller thrust bearing on the back of them for extra protection. It's a less friction as well. Um, really, really nice pieces. So we're gonna go ahead and install this next and carry on with the build. Always want to make sure you line up the dots. I'm going to run this engine straight up on zero. And you can see our chain is perfect. There's no need to run a, a, a guide or a, a little brick right here with these Rollmaster sets. They're super tight and perfect out of the box. Next we have our oil pump. This is a Melling 10295, so it's their standard volume high pressure variant. 
and I usually install the Copo pressure relief spring in these pumps. The crankshaft is final installed, the camshaft is final installed, the oil pump is final installed. Now it's time to put our rods and pistons in the motor. I use Joe Gibbs Driven BR40 break-in oil for this process. I want a really nice break-in oil on the cylinder walls so the pistons and the piston rings can break in very nicely and smoothly. I've seen some people do this with just WD-40. I think that is a joke. WD-40 is nothing more than fish oil. You need to have a nice lubricant on those cylinder walls so the piston rings can break in correctly. That's probably the most important part of the engine break-in process is getting the rings to seat in their position. Okay, this block is totally cleaned, lubricated, and it's ready to go. Let's slam some pistons. I like to use these Total Seal or ARP and, or whoever, there's a bunch of different companies who make these, but I like to use this style ring compressor. It brings the piston into a nice perfect circle. It's hard anodized so it's not going to scratch anything. And then all you have to do, let me roll the motor over, put your connecting rod where it's supposed to be. square up the piston in the bore and then you're going to want to do this in one motion you just want to do a nice pop and you'll pop the piston perfectly into the block with one hit and then you can just gently push the piston into position on the crankshaft so again piston slide the compressor over Pop the rings into their place, just like that. Put this in against the block, get it all square, make sure your rod's not going to hit the crank. Pop it. And then just gently push it into place. And while you're pushing, you'll be able to feel if there's anything weird, like if a ring got flipped or if something's not quite in place, it should be a nice, smooth, linear push with, you know, it's going to have some resistance because of the rings, but it shouldn't be like, you got to hammer it in. It should just be a nice glide, if that makes sense. So again, line it up, pop it. Pop it in. Right before you pop it, you want to make sure you're putting pressure up against the block with this ring compressor. That way, it makes a perfect seal with the block and the piston ring can just slide straight from it into the bore and not have a chance to poke out and get damaged or scratched. When you do it correctly, you should not be able to feel that transition point. It should be a completely linear pop, and then you're good to go. And 
And whenever you're torquing, you want to just be a nice, smooth, controlled motion. You don't want to go halfway and then right before it clicks, run out of room and have to reset it. You want to be able to hit your torque in a nice, smooth motion. What I really like about this wrench, besides the fact that it can do angle torque, is that it also counts for you. You can see in that upper corner, that 16. Pretty convenient, nice feature to have. And as always, come back, blue dot. So everyone knows these rods are torqued. They are final installed. And this short block is complete. Okay, there she is. Let's roll it up and check our deck height so we can get the correct thickness head gaskets ordered to give us right at 40 thousandths quench for a nice NA street motor. So first we'll zero the bridge and let's just go right here to number, uh, number three. Oh, it's going down, but that's all right. Alrighty. Number three, measuring it right in the middle. I've got two thou out of the hole. And if I come to the edge and rock the piston, I get the same result. Let's go to this side. Yep, averaging it all out. We're about two thousandths out of the hole. Now, this is an aluminum engine block. Once it warms up all the way, it's going to expand about three to five thousandths. We'll call it, call it four thou. So, it's going to come up fourth thou. I'm currently two out of the hole. So once it's fully hot, I'll be two in the hole. So to get 40 thou quench, I'm going to order about a 38 thou head gasket. Okay, there it is in all its glory. Pistons feel nice and smooth. Everything is just working nicely. This is going to be a great little engine. Thank you for watching part one of this series. In the next part, I'm going to assemble the cylinder heads and we'll finish this engine out with the heads, timing covers, the oil pan, the valve train, etc. Make sure you guys subscribe so you can get notified when part two comes out. Always leave me a comment below if there's anything you want us to show in the future. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all next week.